In this lesson, we start off the chapter Grade 11 Probability by revising the Grade 10 terminology. Probability is a value that describes the chances of a specific event taking place. Or in other words, the chances of something happening in a specific way. This value can be given as a normal fraction, a decimal fraction or percentage. To determine this normal fraction, we use the formula that says probability is the number of outcomes for the specific event divided by the total number of outcomes. All these different outcomes are put together to form the sample space and inside the sample space there are outcomes that will be for the specific event. When working with probability, there are specific representations that can help you with your calculations. We will work with Venn diagrams, tree diagrams and contingency tables. I will make use of Venn diagrams to explain the different terminology, but later on we will also have an in-depth look at Venn diagrams, tree diagrams and contingency tables. As mentioned earlier, all sample spaces consist of specific events. Each event meets certain requirements. As an example, let's take a sample space of all the grade 11 learners. In this sample space, event A consists of all those learners taking physical sciences and event B, those learners taking life sciences. Some learners will be in event A, other learners will fall in event B and some will take both subjects and fall in the middle. Then there are also learners who take neither of these subjects. Two important concepts that you need to understand are intersection and union. When we focus on intersection, this is when two events A and B happen at the same time or simultaneously and has the following symbol. If we have a look at the example, the intersection will be those learners taking physical and life sciences and that will be the part where the two circles intersect. And that is where the word intersection comes from. And that means we can ask you to determine the probability of A and B and that implies the chance that a learner is chosen that takes both physical and life sciences. Union then means A or B, and the symbol looks like this. In our example, this will be learners taking physical sciences or life sciences, and that means it can be a learner taking only physical science, or only life science, or even both subjects. This means it includes all the learners except for those that take neither of the two subjects. So if we ask you to determine the probability of A or B, we are asking you to determine the probability that a learner chosen has at least one of these two subjects. In this example, we had a clear intersection. There were learners that take both physical and life sciences. These are called inclusive events. Next, we are going to have a look at mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. Therefore, these two events do not have any outcomes in common. In the Venn diagram, you can see that two mutually exclusive events will have circles that do not intersect. Therefore, there are no outcomes where these two events intersect and the probability of A and B is zero. A union is however still possible because there are outcomes that are in A or in B. There is a general rule for probability that can be used to determine different probabilities. The rule looks like this. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A and B. When you have inclusive events, and you take the probability of A, and you add the probability of B, in reality, that intersection is being added twice, 
And that is why we have to subtract the probability of A and B at the end. For mutually exclusive events, the probability of A and B is zero. So the formula simply ends up being the probability of A plus the probability of B. The next definition that you need to know is exhaustive events. When two events are exhaustive, it means that every single outcome is in either event A or event B. That means there are no outcomes that are not in one of these two events. Therefore, the probability that an event is in A or B will be 1. Both inclusive as well as exclusive events can be exhaustive. The last definition that you learned in grade 10 is then complementary events. Complementary events are mutually exclusive as well as exhaustive events. The formula for complementary events will then be the probability of A plus the probability of B equals 1. Simply put, this means that everything that is not in A is in B and everything that's not B is A. Next, we're going to have a look at a few examples where all these different definitions as well as their formulas will be needed. Example 1. Two events A and B are such that the probability of A is 0, 0,3, the probability of B 0, 0,4, and the probability of A and B 0, 0,1. Determine the probability of A or B. Here, you can immediately use your general rule for probability. We are asked to determine the probability of A or B, and we can do that by simply substituting the information given. The probability of A is 0, 0,3, the probability of B 0, 0,4, and the probability of A and B 0, 0,1. This gives us a probability of A or B of 0, 0,6. Here you could also choose to sketch a Venn diagram. Because we are given a probability for A and B, these are inclusive events, and in our Venn diagram, the circles will then intersect. So in the Venn diagram, I'm going to start with the intersection, which is 0, 0,1. The whole circle or event A should be 0, 0,3, so only A is 0, 0,2. And the whole circle B should have a probability of 0, 0,4, so only B is 0, 0,3. We are asked to determine the probability of A or B, which means the union of the two, and therefore I take those that are only in A, plus the probability of only B, plus the probability of both. And once again, I will get 0, 0,6. In this case, if you know the general rule, simply substituting is definitely more effective. Example 2. At a restaurant, 40% of customers order a starter and 50% order dessert. 60% of customers order at least one of the two. Determine the probability that a customer will order a starter and dessert. Here, all the probabilities are given as percentages, so we can go and rewrite that as 0, 0,4, 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,6 if we want to use the normal fraction. We are given that 60% of customers order at least one of the two, and at least here implies union, so it is the probability of a starter or a dessert. We are asked to determine the probability that a customer will order a starter and dessert, so, written in mathematics, that will be the probability of a starter and dessert. Once again, the easiest would be to use your general rule. We were given that the probability of ordering a starter or dessert is 60%, so 0, 0,6. The probability of ordering a starter is 40% or 0, 0,4. And for a dessert, 0, 0,5. 
Now we can go and calculate the probability of ordering a starter and dessert. So if I want to solve the probability of a starter and a dessert, I will have 0 0,9 on the right, adding the 0 0,4 and 0 0,5, and then subtract 0 0,6. So the probability of a starter and dessert will be 0 0,3. Example 3. Two mutually exclusive events, A and B, are such that the probability of A is 0 0,3 and the probability of not B is 0 0,4. Determine the probability of A or B. Here we need to realize that the two events are mutually exclusive, which means the probability of A and B is zero. The probability of A is given, but the probability of B is not given. We can, however, work with the fact that the probability of not B is 0,4. So the probability of B will be 1 minus the probability of anything that is not B, and that is 1 minus 0, 0,4. So the probability of B is 0, 0,6. And now I can once again go to my general rule. And now we know that the probability of A is 0, 0,3, the probability of B is 0, 0,6 and the probability of A and B is 0, so we could have also left that out. That means the probability of A or B is 0, 0,9. In the next lesson, we are going to have a look at new terminology and formulas, so you need to ensure that you know all the definitions and formulas of lesson 1.